Thank you very much. Please be seated. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and to all of the distinguished guests uh, present, I want to acknowledge uh, the presence of Senator uh, Claiborne Pell and Senator Max Baucus, both of whom uh, are here, uh, Congressman George Miller, Congressman Kika de la Garza, Congressman Jerry Studs, Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi, uh, Congressman Mike Sinar, Congressman John Conyers, and uh, have I missed other members of Congress? Uh, and other distinguished guests, let me thank all of you for being here. This morning I was in New York speaking to the United Nations Commission on Sustainable Development at its very first gathering. It's gathering today because it's exactly one year since the Earth Summit in Rio. And at the UN, the first meeting of this commission is a tangible outgrowth of the spirit emanating from that landmark event. After all, when forests are being destroyed at the rate of one football field's worth each second around the world, when we're adding the equivalent of one China every 10 years to the world's population, when 2,500 people around the world die every hour from contaminated drinking water, then obviously we have to confront the issues facing the global environment. Sustainable development, development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the future, will be essential to our success. This morning at the United Nations, I said that the UN Commission can't work unless each country accepts responsibility. And so it is with deep pleasure and pride that I introduce the President in a moment in a ceremony that demonstrates such responsibility on the part of the United States of America. It signifies the eagerness of this administration and this president to help lead the way when it comes to the environment. The president made his commitment clear last month when he commemorated Earth Day with these words. Unless we act and act now, he said, we face a future where our planet will be home to nine billion people, but its capacity to support and sustain our lives will be very much diminished. Of course, words are easy, but President Clinton has backed up those words with action. He cited the critical importance of the biodiversity treaty that emerged from the Earth Summit and announced we would sign that treaty, and we did on June 4th. He stressed the importance of reducing greenhouse gas emissions and committed our country to reducing to 1990 levels by the year 2000, a major change of policy for the United States. He has established a national biological survey to support efforts to maintain domestic biodiversity. He has announced a series of executive orders to transform our government into a leader in pollution prevention and energy efficiency, including orders involving the reduction of toxic releases from federal facilities, early phase out of ozone depleting chemicals, increased federal use of recycled paper and other recycled products, the purchase of energy efficient technology, including alternative fuel vehicles for federal fleets. And there are more steps ahead will develop a management plan for federal forests. By August, we'll have a plan to continue the downward trend of greenhouse gases into the 21st century. Is there more to do than that? Of course there is, a lot more. And that's why it gives me such pleasure to introduce to you today a president who knows what needs to be done and has the commitment, energy, and foresight to get things done. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, Bill Clinton. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being here. It has been a year since the Earth Summit in Rio. I think you might be uh, interested to know that a year ago, I placed a call to Brazil to Senator Al Gore from Tennessee to get a report on the goings-on at the Earth Summit and to nose out
As I was saying, a, a year ago at the Earth Summit in Rio, I placed a call to Senator Al Gore, Tennessee, to get a report on the goings-on there from him and from Senator Worth of Colorado, uh, and to begin the process by which uh, we came together as a team. Not very long after that, I asked Al Gore to join the Democratic ticket, and the rest was history. I don't want to make any bones about it. When we had our first very long meeting, one thing that then Senator Gore said was that he wanted to be part of a ticket that, if elected, could put the environment back on the front burner in American public life and do it in a way that would be good for the economy, not bad for the economy. Do it in a way that would bring the American people together, not divide them. All the policy positions that the Vice President just announced that we have taken to change the direction of the previous administrations, and more importantly, to go beyond politics to embrace a new philosophy of uniting our goals of preserving the environment and promoting economic growth would have been very difficult to achieve had it not been for his leadership and constant involvement and faithfulness to this cause. And the American people owe him a great debt of gratitude. <laughs> I'd also like to acknowledge the presence of one other person in this audience who has not been introduced and is not up here, but uh, it will become obvious when I say what I want to say. The Deputy Secretary of Education, Madeline Kunin, is here. She is formerly the governor of Vermont, and as far as I know, she was the only governor in the country that actually had a sustainable development commission actively operating on the problems of the people of Vermont when she was the governor. And she, in many ways, blazed a trail for what we are attempting to do today, and I thank you for that. A year ago, the United States was in Rio fighting the Global Warming Treaty and the Biodiversity Treaty. Our leading economic competitors were at the Earth Summit signing off on the Global Warming Treaty, signing off on the Biodiversity Treaty, and while the United States was fighting to water it down, change it, or thwart it, they spent all their time selling environmental technology to other nations in the world, making money while we made hot air. What a difference a year can make. This morning, the Vice President made us all proud in his opening address before the United Nations Commission on Sustainable Development. America is now doing what we ought to do. We're leading again, leading the nations of the world in the pursuit of a great purpose. This afternoon, I am announcing the creation of the President's Council on Sustainable Development to help set policies to grow the economy and preserve the environment for our children and our children's children bringing together some of the most innovative people from business, from government, from the environmental movement, the civil rights movement, and the labor movement. People who bring a wealth of experience and accomplishment to this mission. People who have developed environmentally sound products, found ways to protect our air and water, and defended communities all across the country against pollution and health hazards. In the past, many might not have ever had the chance to sit down at the table and work together, but now they are working together. These men and women have real experience in the real world, and I am counting on them to achieve real results. I'm asking them to find new ways to combine economic growth and environmental protection, to promote our best interests in the world community, to bring our people together to meet the needs of the present without jeopardizing the future. I'm asking the Council to be guided by three principles that inform our environmental policies. First, we believe a healthy economy and a healthy environment go hand in hand. Environmental problems result not from robust growth, but from reckless growth. And we can grow the economy by making our people healthier, our communities more attractive, and our products and our services more environmentally conscious. Second, America must lead the way in promoting economic growth and environmental preservation at home and abroad. We live in an era of global economics, global environmentalism, global epidemics. Our lives and our livelihoods depend upon people 
throughout the world being healthy and prosperous and respectful of the planet we all share. What is good for the world, in this sense, is very good for America. And third, we must move beyond the false choices and unnecessary antagonisms of the past. From American business and American labor, to the world's wealthiest nations and the world's poorest, we all share a common interest in economic growth that preserves rather than pollutes our environment. America can set an example by achieving economic growth that can continue through the lifetimes of our children and grandchildren because it respects the resources that make that growth possible. That is what we mean by sustainable development. That is why I'm asking this council to promote healthy communities and environmentally sound products and services that will do the best in the world to make our marketplace the best in the world now and well in to the 21st century. When we talk about environmental justice, we mean calling a halt to the poisoning and the pollution of our poorest communities, from our rural areas to our inner cities. We don't have a person to waste, and pollution clearly wastes human lives and natural resources. When our children's lives are no longer cut short by toxic dumps, when their minds are no longer damaged by lead paint poisoning, we will stop wasting the energy and the intelligence that could build a stronger and a more prosperous America. When we talk about environmentally sound products and services, we mean light bulbs and computers and refrigerators that use less energy and automobiles that produce less pollution. People all across the world want to buy these goods and services. And when we make them in America, that means better paying and more secure jobs and higher living standards for all of our people. Americans take pride in our know-how our can-do spirit, and our love of this remarkable land that God has given us. With leaders like the men and women here today, we can put what is best about America to work, building a stronger economy and preserving this planet for our children and all generations to come. Thank you very much. Now, I would like to introduce the co-chairs of this remarkable assemblage behind me. Those of you who've been involved with sustainable development issues will recognize a friend in Dave Buzelli, the co-chair of the President's Council on Sustainable Development. He's the Vice President and Corporate Director of Environment, Health, and Safety at Dow Chemical. He's been on the forefront of efforts to improve corporate environmental responsibility for some time now. In his almost 30 years with Dow, Dave has consistently attempted to integrate environmental and economic policies. He understands that good environmental policies often do make good economic sense. I'm equally pleased to be able to introduce our other co-chair, Jonathan Lash, who is also a very familiar face to many of you. He's the president of the World Resources Institute, an important center for policy research and technical issues, assistance on issues ranging from poverty and development to environmental quality. While directing the Environmental Law Center at Vermont Law School, Jonathan helped found the Institute for Sustainable Communities, which provides environmental training for Eastern European countries. His vision and experiences make him ideally suited to serve as co-chair of the President's Council. I'd like to now ask Dave and Jonathan to come forward. Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, members of the Cabinet, Congress, members of the new President's Council, and distinguished guests. It's an honor to participate in this Council, and I thank you for the opportunity. With your continued support and commitment, and with the combined talents and experiences of these Council members, I'm very optimistic about our future. This partnership combines the resources of industry, government, and environmental leaders for the greater good of our country. This council represents a change, a change from a fragmented approach, and it's a change for the better. We know that the economy and environment are intertwined. We know that the path to sustainable development will require new policies. And we know that the path we are on today will not take us to where we want to go. We will need the active involvement of hundreds of people who work at the community, state, and national level. Several states, such as Michigan, New York, Minnesota, and North Carolina have initiatives underway, and we intend to establish linkages with them and with many others. The business community that I represent is eager to, part to participate. 
We look forward to being part of the solution and recognize that the environment is a key, important external issue impacting businesses' future success. Why am I so optimistic? Well, I've seen firsthand what happens when we can work together. I have seen business leaders taking bold, new environmental approaches that change the course of their business. I have listened to speeches by government, environmental, and business leaders in which you couldn't tell from the text which group they represented. Well, it's time to convert words, thoughts, and attitudes into action. Today, we all accept your challenge to improve our national decision-making process through this partnership. It's the best way to ensure that our country has both a sustainable economy and a sustainable environment. Thank you. Mr. President, Vice President Gore, distinguished guests, members of the Council, I'm very proud and excited to be a part of this historic Council. By bringing together leaders from so many different sectors who are committed to finding ways for our country to move toward a sustainable future, Mr. President, you have created a timely opportunity for us to develop a powerful vision of sustainability and a strategy to achieve it. In the process, we can change the way national environmental policy is made, from confrontation to partnership from gridlock to progress. The Council's membership and mandate reflect the belief growing among business and environment and community leaders that good economic policy protects the environment and good environmental policy strengthens the economy. The Council is the right group at the right time. Working together, we can define broad policy goals and strategies that integrate government programs to strengthen the economy and protect the environment. It is very significant that the membership of the Council includes five members of the Cabinet, the greatest opportunities to create government policies that promote sustainable development are not found just in the EPA, but in the departments of agriculture, commerce, interior, and energy. Their participation in the Council's work makes the potential for concrete progress very real and very immediate. The Council's resources, government, non-governmental organizations, and industry bring together the critical ingredients to shape sustainable development that works. And on behalf of my co-chairman, David Bazelli and myself, I want to thank the members of the Council for the commitment that each one of them has made to this process. I'm proud to be part of this effort to forge a strong and productive partnership, and I'm eager to get to work. Thank you all very much, and thanks for enduring the sun. Pass over Judge Breyer and uh, Secretary Babbitt. Was it a hard decision? Well, it was hard in the sense that they were all qualified. But and there were two or three others I thought were exceptionally well qualified. But 
once I talked to her, I felt very strongly about her. This is not a negative thing on them. And as I said, out there in the crowd, I had half a dozen people come up to me and thank me for leaving Secretary Babin at the Interior Department. They said he was the best Interior Secretary they ever seen. So that, that was a real problem. But I, I liked them all. I thought they were all superbly well qualified. And I think that they will be in the future. There was no negative. It was a, it was a positive position being able to pick the person I thought would be best at this time. It was a purely positive choice. And that's it. It's a, a joy to make. Right. Not easy. You can see today from her, she's an extraordinary woman. She has incredible inner strength and character. And I think it will communicate itself and really help you. How much, how much does Secretary Babbitt feel, sir? Uh, what if the people of Arkansas had said they didn't want you to be president? 